Hello and welcome to today's content which will be on the new unit farm since she has come out and this is going to be right before the Final Fantasy XV um, collaboration. So yeah, this is a little bit late but yeah I had a lot of obligations in real life. We also had limited guild war and guild raid to focus on so it's been a very busy week. Anyways without further ado let's begin. Here we are for abilities. For farm specifically, her main job is going to be the ninja. As a base unit, she's going to get Shuriken, Hide, Shadowbind, Utsasume, uh, Dream Within a Dream, and then Plumage Pummel, which is going to be her limit break specifically. As you can see, um, it's going to be decreasing the water resistance first before the damage, and it has a chance to inflict paralysis if it hits. For her EX upgrade, Shuriken is going to turn into Shuriken of Undoing. Now, this is the kind of cool part. She has very good utility here where it can dispel immortal spirits and guts and auto revive which is re-raise before the hit happens so it will happen even if it misses then deals damage and then it can decrease accuracy by 30 for 3 turns for a target so yeah this is really really good against the units that like have this much like annoyance to their usage. From here um, dream within a dream is going to be upgraded into demise within a dream where it's going to be lowering defense and spirit up to 30 before the damage happens. As you can see, the damage modifier also goes up a little bit. So it's not going to be doing like insane damage, but it does set up for a little bit more damage, especially with the defense down right, right before it happens. So the crit chance is also going to be still 30, 20% from uh, Dream Within Dream. It's just the added effect, and it still hits three times. From here, her EX ability is going to be Sign of Safeguarding, which she can increase the accuracy and AoE uh, accuracy by 30, up to 30. AoE resistance by 15 for 3 turns for her allies, and then she can increase her own magic uh, resistance by 20% for herself. So yeah, this is going to be very nice in terms of if you want to stack AoE resistance and or accuracy for your team, or if you just want to get a little bit more magic resistance for yourself. For her subjobs, her ninja subjob, most importantly, is going to be Sweeton, which is going to be a typeless water physical attack. Well, it like scales off physical, so yeah, that's basically what it's going to do. Um, for the samurai sub job, most importantly here is going to be Oborozuki, mostly because it's going to be one of her only few AoE abilities that still hits decently hard and has a chance to slow. So yeah, she does have access to very cheap AP abilities here as well. And then lastly is going to be the ranger sub job, where most importantly she does have sharpshoot here, but she does not have barrage unfortunately. But yeah, basically sharpshoot is going to be very very nice because it's a 100% hit ability and her other hardest hitting ability is going to be supercharged but keep in mind it does have a cast time because that's just how it is. So here we are for resistances and passives. To slash she's going to be negative 5%, to pierce negative 10%, strike 10%, missile 10% and then magic is 15%. As you can see overall in terms of 100% hit abilities against specifically strike and magic attack types she will be decent into them. However, in terms of pierce and slash, she's going to have to be very very careful in those like areas. Specifically speaking, like cloud triple slash will dumpster her instantly, there's nothing she can do. Against Oberon, his thundering smite I believe ability will take her out in one shot. Um, if she does not raise her missile resistance to a sufficient amount and or like resistances in general, she can still be one shot by a few units, kind of like Jaden if he like hits hard enough and she does not have any like spirit on her build or like even a sharpshoot from Frederica or like other missile units as well in general. For her magic attack types at least she has a decent amount 15% is pretty good. Um, if she goes against like something like uh, a Yuna or something that has well that will use holy and hit her it won't do as much damage however if we're gonna use someone like Helena who still has magic attack resistance penetration it can still deal significant damage to farm so just keep that in mind. She does have 0% AoE, 0% single target, at level 120, master ability included, 0 defense, 0 spirit. This means she does have to rely on her resistances or her evasion, which I will be getting into in the next slide, for survivability. Now her resistances to statuses is actually one of the best in the game in my opinion. 50% to confusion, 50% to slash, very, uh, not slash, sorry, disable, sorry, why, why did I say slash? But yeah, 50% to disable. These two are very nice to have. I know she does not have stop, however, disable and confusion is two things I will definitely take if I had to miss only one. And then 10% to stun, which does not happen very often, but yeah, it's still very nice to have. For her master ability, she's going to have the um, mono water, and then she gets 15 base defense penetration and then 5 evasion for herself. This does mean that, like, you can tell already that she's going to be an evasion unit. She's also a ninja, so you know, it kind of makes sense. Um, she does have 4 move, 3 jump as unit, and she will be the 90 cost. 
for her passes and why I highly recommend and not to really deter her outside of it is going to be Shadow Runner specifically for the agility and luck, specifically for the luck for more evasion, and Blade Soul not only for the attack percentage but also the evasion rate. So yeah, she's going to be really going pretty evadey with that setup. For Nishin Flex, as you can see, Shikuchi is going to be for more mobility on larger maps or if you want to like do some cheese. Uh, Ranger Lore is going to be specifically if you just want her to use Ranger abilities like more focused on it. Or Focus, which I mean if you want more missile damage, but I don't, I wouldn't really recommend that one over the other two. Like it, even for niche regions, I, I can't see it. Um, for her reaction abilities, I'm not even going to talk about the other two. Use Reflex. We all know how it goes. Reflex is going to just be so good. Especially if she's already super evadey and she has reflex on top of that, you can imagine just how annoying that can get. But yeah, basically for her reaction abilities, use reflex. So here we are at farms rating out of 5. So unfortunately, I did end up giving her a 3 out of 5. This does mean she does not have another example slide for her for her setup. Because I do believe if you're picking up farm, it's really you know what you're doing in terms of what composition you want. Which is obviously going to be Laura Croft, farm, and then plus 1. And that niche water type is going to be water evasion, obviously, with a lot of missile slash... I shouldn't say slash. Missile and, like, debuffing setup, which is going to be very good into a very few niche setups. Like, any generic, of like, anti-evasion team, like, even Cloud alone, will do very well into farm. So, her as a unit kind of... Is hard for her to fit into the meta without a very, very specific slash niche setup and which is going to be basically what she can do best which is taking out people who kind of abuse re-raise and immortal spirit however if you take a unit out that has re-raise and immortal spirit for a unit that just has strong overall like stuff as a unit overall then farm's not really going to be doing her job like better than compared to a lot of other units but yeah i'll explain why in the pros and cons but here we go for the pros She's able to become a very high evasion, utility decent DPS unit with good debuffs and dispels specifically for re-raise and immortal spirit. As we said before, units kind of like that are abusing like the Halloween Ryu TMR um, or like Engelbert that are going to be using like guts and re-raise like for well, as much mo max possible cheese. She's going to be very good into them. Similarly, you could even say like she's good into Elena because Elena will have guts and then she's a baby but um what is it farm has farm is pretty good into evasion units overall now she has good hp for an evasion unit i'm not gonna say she has good hp overall but compared to the other evasion units she has a pretty good hp she also has a very high attack stat total not the base amount but a very high attack stat total she also has a very high luck at the stat especially with shadow runner as her passive she can go very like she could be very very high luck stat um, Shuriken of Undoing is going to be extremely strong in taking out re-raising and immortal spirit units as I said, as well as lowering accuracy. So not only is this kind of like an omni tool in my opinion against units that are re-raising and immortal spirits, but it's also going to help her teammates because she can lower the accuracy of units with that specifically. She has access to slash, typeless, as well as missile damage for a uh, wide variety. Typeless as we saw is going to be specifically on the uh, ninja subjob, as well as missile damage specifically going to be on the ranger subjob. Demise within a dream is going to help not only set up chains because it does hit three times for water and slash total. Um, the defense and spare debuff is going to be very useful as well to really just like pump up damage on that one unit, at least in that one turn order. Um, it is also very cheap for her to use because it only is going to cost 17 AP for dream within a dream. I mean, demise within a dream. So it really is a very cost effective ability just for her to use. She's actually pretty much, uh, a, a, like, she's able to have as much evasion as Zazan at her full potential. Like, I literally, like, mapped it out on the builder, checked it out. She can literally be as evadey as Zazan, so that's pretty cool. She's, uh, she's efficient against other evasion units, mostly because of her accuracy buffs, her super high luck stat, as well as 100% hit ability with sharpshoot. So she does have the correct tools to kind of fight off evasion units as well. The good, mag uh, the good base magic attack resistance helps against fighting mages overall that do not have magic attack resistance penetration. As I said earlier, kind of like Glaciella if she's even able to hit her and I don't know why you would use Glaciella Regalia against the water unit. Um, or Yuna even. Um, if they do not have magic attack resistance penetration, they will struggle to take out farm even with their 100% hit abilities. Obviously, as I said, if Helena does happen to hit her with her 100% hit ability, it will be a different story because of her penetration. But yeah, that's a different story. 
Um, she also has a very insanely good status resistance setup as I said. Disable and confusion resistance is very nice and stun on top of it is very like it's useful. It's, it's definitely not going to be useless. So she does have three viable uh, status resistances and you always want to try to aim for three if possible on the unit. Um, she's able to become very quick and uh, mobile and she can usually get the first interaction to go her way. She's kind of like a Venera because they're able to get very very fast as well as they're able to have very high mobility like 4 or 5 move like maps like Guild War maps or Arena maps where we have like castle exterior where it's very close well, is it castle exterior I believe or interior uh, where you literally are only like 10 spaces away from the opponent if she just straight up buffs and moves in onto the opponent the opponent won't the ai cannot buff up because she is now in range they will just instead try to attack her so yeah she can do that type of interactions because she's able to now let's talk about all the negatives now since i talked about a lot of the positives so so a lot of negatives that i found out about her she has no spirit or defense, so that like or other mitigation options outside of evasion. So if she does not evade, she will die very, very swiftly, especially with her HP pool, because she's a evasion unit for HP and she does not have any other options. She has to evade, or else she will die very quickly. Even from um what is it, chip damage. Even if you get her AoE resistance up, without stacking up the AoE resistance, it's not gonna be good enough for her to survive most AoE attacks if it hits. That's why, that is a very key point, she has to be evasive. Now, her base attack stat is low while her total is high, but she does have very poor damage modifiers. And what I mean by this, especially on her abilities, as you saw, none of them go past... On her main job alone, outside of her limit break, none of them go past the, like, what is it, 100... 130 140% so yeah she's really not going to be hitting too hard her other sub job abilities will be able to like hit decently hard but it's not going to be anywhere close to like more relevant dps now um despite shuriken of undoing the spell for re-raising immortal spirits if it's a tank which you will specifically be using it for like engelbert the hate does not go away so what this means is that it's going to be less effective against tanks specifically and you can actually kind of AI screw yourself up as well. The reason being is that if Engelbert loses his uh, immortal spirits and he's still far out of range because she debuffed him, he will use his immortal conviction again for another guts as well as stacking up the hate now to 24 instead of 12 because it is the same buff it will stack up on the hate. Well, I mean, technically, if farm does hit him before that happens, it will be 22, but you know what I mean. It will stack up the hate even more. So, while she is getting rid of the Immortal Spirit and Guts, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it does not get rid of the hate status as a tank. And also, if she does use this Shuriken against a different unit that does not have Immortal Spirit or Re-Raise, it's completely useless. Like, it literally did not do much outside of lowering um, the accuracy, and most tanks overall they are their job is not killing evasion units they are there just for the hate so yeah keep that in mind in terms of usability you do have to still watch out for it she people are like oh it's gonna be like a counter to engelbert you got this it's like i'm not gonna say you're wrong but i'm not gonna say you're right either because it's gonna be definitely situational and how it's gonna be used Anyways, without the ranger sub um she performs horribly for dps against slash resistance tanks specifically i did not include that in the text but i'm saying it here in terms of voice because no slash resistance penetration exists on her and she only has a base of 15 percent defense penetration she must use demise within a dream to set up for damage otherwise she is literally going to be hitting blanks onto enemies that have either high defense defense um debuff resistance or if they have very high slash resistance she's going to be in trouble very very quickly so even with the 15% base magic attack resistance, as I said, even if even if she's buffed up or set up for more, Helena specifically, because she's still meta, can still deal significant damage because of how much magic attack resistance penetration she has. Easily reaching 40% with a single item, yeah, you are you guys already know how annoying it is to deal with Helena and just, that's just kind of how it's going to be specifically. So she does have magic, good magic attack resistance penetration, but against meta units, which is obviously going to be Helena, she will still struggle there unless you giga boost it. And even if you do boost it to a high amount, I mean, how much are you losing to boost it that high? Like, let's talk. So it's it's going to get to that discussion. Now, her most important abilities are all going to be single target. 
However, if she does have a sub job, like just for flexibility for AoE, she will prioritize the AoE abilities if she gets into range. So it is literally a double edged sword how you set her up. You either want her to be one dimensional forward, like carpool tunnel, well, not carpool tunnel, sorry. You want her to tunnel vision onto a single unit with her abilities and just kind of like use her single target abilities and not rely on any of her AoE. Or you kind of want to change a really specific setup. So she is not only super difficult to use as well, she's hard to set up to get to do what you want exactly. So yeah, you do have to worry about that. And that's where it comes in for the setup for AI without significant usage of farm is very, very, very poor. Um, like it's so hard to make her work very well in a majority of setups in general. So. If you want her to have missile damage for her ranger sub, she will prior she will prioritize using those damage abilities out instead of using her other like ninja abilities that she should be using for the main reason you're bringing her. So you just have to keep that in mind. Um, additionally, if she uses her ninja or samurai abilities at close range, she it is entirely possible she uses those abilities instead of demise within a dream consistently or even the shuriken if she's in range already because she rather do more damage rather than set up just in general. Uh, you do have to like worry about that situationally like she's definitely going to be using Oborozuki over using Demise Within a Dream if she can hit two units like stuff like that you do have to watch out for AI on her. The niche use of her for like she's insanely strong on a really strong water mono setup however there's going to be ex she's her usage falls off heavily when you use her in any other composition outside of water because she needs those vision cards as a setup for survivability in terms of vision card setup as well as teams like she has to have evasion so you have to have a mandatory 35 percent evasion uh, like vision card on her or else she will die very very quickly and she needs like evasion as well as i guess kind of she needs her water counterparts because she is a setup unit she is not a single unit that will like carry herself through her, her team like she is a setup she has to be carried through her team while she provides what she can. And lastly, her hardest hitting ability is her limit break, which without bells or multiple turns of buffing or AP gain, will prevent her from actually using her other utility abilities because she will be at a lack of AP after using her limit break. So you have to keep in mind, if you want her to use her limit break as well, you do have to have some a type of AP generation for her in the form of either multiple turns of buffing, AP generation, or bells just in general. So yeah, you she is not an easy unit to use definitely she can be used very well in the right hands but she is a very very difficult unit to use so overall in the end i did end up giving her a three out of five because just how niche she is and how difficult a niche unit already is it's not going to be helping you in terms of a unit overall now in terms of tmr chase rating I did give it a 2.5 out of 5, kind of like the last TMR I also rated. The reason being is that the Peacock Robe is a cloth armor, only 320 HP, not too high. 10 accuracy, and eh, that's alright. 15 evade is very good. However, if you compare it to the other evasion clothes in general, this is missing out on a significant amount of evasion. Additionally, with the what is it, the Santa robe coming out soon. I I I will literally like believe it is next month. That raid is coming out next month. The the Santa robes is significantly better than the Peacock robe by miles. Like it's not even funny. Like it's just so much better. But yeah, the active effect is gonna be Indomitable Spirit, which is gonna increase Spirit by 15 for three turns for your allies, and then Spirit debuff resistance by only 50% for three turns for allies. If Spirit debuff was 100%, maybe I would rate it higher, but but it's only 50%, so you're not only already gambling off a base of 50%, only 15 spirit, I believe it was like, was it Guardian Fighting Spirit? Like, the different armor, I think it's from Rain's armor, gives 45 like spirit or something like that. For, I know it's for only for a single turn, but that is better usage overall in terms of fighting against magic compositions in general. So yeah, it's overall, that's how it's going to be for the team R. And yeah, we've come to the end of the video. As always, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be pretty busy once the Final Fantasy XV collaboration comes out. Not only because I'm returning back to work, I have to be setting up for work in real life, but also because because the fifth, uh, Final Fantasy XV units are going to be coming out, I will be doing videos on them as soon as possible as when I can, and I will probably do it when they literally come out, so Wednesday or Tuesday. So it's going to be a pretty busy week. Like, yeah. But yeah, overall, thanks for watching, and until next video, peace out.